making a lot of mess. We're using watercolour, we're using fine liner. It's going to be fun, it's going to be very messy. We're grabbing the journal, a watercolour palette and some fine liners. Obviously we need a cloth and some water too because today we're painting. We're painting four pages and the theme is vampires and all things spooky. I've actually already drawn the line work for the first page. I did a little on the second too but left the rest for us to do together. I guess you could say I have this fear of messing up the first page and the rest going horrifically. Plus, I mean, it's literally the first page. And also line work is the hardest part to do on camera because you can't hunch over with your face right up against the page. It's really easy to get wrong. First up we need to do the base layer. I'm not using wet on wet because this paper kind of freaks out and warps like crazy. So we're going in wet on dry and layering instead. The colour palette is going to end up dark, mostly purple because I think that's kind of an iconic vampire colour. But I do also want to have some bright colours in there. One thing I like to do is add bright colours first and then make it a little bit more normal later on. You can see this a lot in the portraits I paint that kind of start out blue and then go a little bit pink before the yellow is added. I love all the colour that's in this face though and I think drastic colours really work well for a vampire. So even though we're adding purple we're still keeping a lot of those colours in. We don't want to cover it up. This way of creating art is actually a lot of fun. It's the way that I like to paint when I'm outside plein air painting. Line and wash is so simple, once the lines are done. I'm not a huge fan of the first step, but washing random colour on top, knowing that the key points are already there, is really fun. This page was a lot of fun to paint. We're mostly using yellow and pink, well, gambouge and pyrrhal red, with some ultramarine violet for the shadows. One thing I have been enjoying lately is using purple for shadows instead of blue. Ultramarine is usually my go-to shadow colour, but I have always tend to use purple for shadows when I paint darker skin tones in portraits. And now I've kind of been using it for everything really. Anything with a shadow, I just kind of prefer purple. I think it looks nicer, it doesn't look as cool like cool toned, it still looks cool. We're moving on to the second page now. Again, I sketched out the skull because I was scared. But we still need to do some bits of decoration and the calendar. Whilst this is technically still a bullet journal, so it needs the calendar and the dates, it's not really. I kind of figured out this year that I actually don't need to record very much. There's often not that much that I need to write down, and the habit trackers have disappeared. I just don't think they're right for me. I do the daily doodle diary every day, and I take my supplements pretty much every day. Ticking it off just wasn't working for me. I think most Mostly now because I actually have that separation. My bedroom used to also be my work area, but now that I'm in this house, the art studio is downstairs and I'm upstairs when I'm not working, so it doesn't really work. The journal stays downstairs in the work area and most of the habits are done upstairs. And obviously I want to keep that separation for a healthy work-life balance. I did actually notice once I'd painted all four of these spreads, the October journal setup is uploaded in September on my channel whilst the November pages are uploaded to my channel in October. I really didn't think that through. So here we are a little bit early for spooky season and then at the end of October we're gonna be painting spreads that have nothing to do with Halloween. But oh well, here we are. It fits for me because I'm using it in October but it doesn't really make sense on the channel. I mean we've still got Halloween content coming up but there's also gonna be this random on November set up. We're on to the third pages now and as you can see the paper has started to warp quite a lot so we're gonna have to clip it down. Getting out that Ahuhu fine liner again to draw this entire page. This set of pens is actually really good but my favourite by far is the brush pen. It is quite thin though, it's quite small. I feel like they could easily make their own set of brush liners like this because it would be really nice to have different sizes. One day I will get that iconic Pentel brush pen. Unfortunately they're just really expensive where I live. I mean I don't know if they're actually cheap 
anywhere, but it's like 15, 20 pound for one pan, which is, is pricey, especially because it'll need to be refilled quite often with ink. So I haven't quite made that purchase yet. We really are just cramming all of those dates onto one page like a crazy person. We'll see how it goes. Using the same colours to paint this spread, and I probably should have taken my time a little bit more with this one. I don't know if it really comes across, but it's a person looking into one of those old handheld mirrors, and the glass has cracked. Not exactly vampire themed, since in a lot of stories vampires can't actually see themselves in mirrors. I think it's because the silver on the mirror can repel evil spirits, so that's why they don't like them or use them. My thinking here is that this character is losing their powers and becoming a mortal human, so they're in an in-between phase. I was trying to think of as many spooky things as possible, and these kind of old mirrors are very spooky. On the final spread we have a rose and a castle. Because September setup included three portraits and quite big ones at that, I mean we painted Medusa and Michelangelo's David. It was big. I didn't want to fill each page with portraits again because that would be too similar. Instead, we're drawing a castle and I'm not good with perspective or buildings. Like when I paint outside, I paint grass, hills, beaches, even trees I struggle with. I need to practice trees. They're difficult to get right because the light actually shines through them. So there's shadows and highlights within the tree and it's not just green all over. My mind thinks it's green, so I paint trees green and then they look incredibly flat. I guess the problem is I only really paint trees when I'm plein air painting. I don't draw them in my pieces, so I kind of forget to dedicate time to actually learning them. If you want to join me plein air painting, we have lots of videos in the playlist down below on my channel. But I mean portraits are very different to landscapes, and I'm definitely leaning closer towards them now. I think that's where my art style lies. I do love painting outside though. I think it's still a lot of fun and I will continue to do that for as long as I can. I love that the castle is pink and purple. And the background is supposed to be clouds. I don't know if you can tell. Wait, we forgot something. If you've watched my Timu art hauls, you'll know that I picked up quite a few items that fit this theme. I got Halloween washi tape, and also some darker colours with stars that could really fit this theme. Plus, I got a ton of stickers. I got two packs of spooky things a while ago, but we did use a lot of these for the witch theme in May, so I've got to make sure that I pick out different items this time. I got these cute little black cat stickers which are perfect. Well, I mean they would have been perfect for the witch theme, but I didn't use them for some reason, so we're going to use them for vampires. I also have this little book of washi tape stickers, and it's kind of themed around grey, but it has a lot of cool stickers in, especially these roses that fit the theme perfectly. They're pretty, but also pretty spooky. I don't know if the decoration really improves these pages, but you know what, it's always fun to add stickers and tape to pages like this. I just might have gone a little bit overboard. But I have left the first page completely undecorated, I didn't feel like it really needed anything. And that's all the pages complete. These pages are fun, slightly spooky, and very different to anything we've created in the last few months. If you haven't used watercolour like this, I definitely recommend it's a lot of fun. Please give this video a like if you've enjoyed it, and subscribe to see what we create next month. We're bringing out the acrylic markers again and using them with colour pencils. Thank you for joining me, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you on Thursday. Bye bye!